Fine. I'll do it myself. All of the gameplay in this video was recorded directly on Source 2, but in some moments I'll use footage from the original CSGO for visual references. Right now you're seeing a raw preview of our first gameplay prototype created in just under 6 months. Due to the fact that this is only a vertical slice, you'll occasionally see some visual or gameplay flaws. During the development of this project, we did not use a single line of code from the original game, and all systems and game mechanics were recreated from scratch. The ultimate goal was to create an open source version of CSGO on the new engine and publish all our code on GitHub so that any modders can create their own projects based on our framework. A secondary goal is to recreate all the cut or cancelled content for CSGO, including weapons, game modes, maps and other interesting stuff. However, a while ago we faced a problem which made it mentally difficult for me to complete this video. And this problem is directly related to Valve's legal department. Max at the microphone again and let's get right into it. This story begins shortly after the release of Half-Life Alex, when the community was allowed to work in Advanced Source 2 development tools for the first time. Previously, they were available only in Dota, and the creation of any FPS project was literally impossible. Obviously, immediately after that, I became obsessed with the idea of porting CSGO from the first Source engine to the second one. At the moment, I decided to limit myself to just assets, as it was simply impossible to make a multiplayer shooter based on the single-player Half-Life Alex. It turned out quite nicely and I talk about it in more detail in a separate video on my main channel two years ago. There are English subtitles, so you can check it out yourself. However, after a while, some quite unexpected news appeared. Gary Newman, the creator of Gary's Mod, has acquired the license and source code for the new engine in order to develop a spiritual successor to the Gmod called Sandbox. In this regard, I wrote a DM to Gary and got early access to this project. And my next goal was to replicate everything I did in Half-Life Alex, but only for the spiritual successor of Gary's mod, as I would definitely be able to implement the basic FPS shooter mechanics there. Since I'm not much of a code guy, in the beginning I've used an open source add-on called Simple Weapon Base for the first gameplay prototype. Basically, I once again ported the Dust 2 map to the new engine, hooked the CSGO assets onto the add-on with the ready-to-use weapon mechanics and posted a short video showing a concept of how Counter-Strike could look on Source 2. At the same time, another small team started developing a similar project called Team Fortress Source 2, and after seeing my concept, one of the key developers of TFS2 by the name Moonly messaged me and said, Listen, let's turn your obsession into reality. Thus, the Counter-Strike Source 2 project was born, and after a bit of discussion, we agreed that the best possible approach would be merging two of the foundations together. Using the same code base has a positive effect on the development of both projects. By adding some functions and mechanics for the Counter-Strike, the guys can reuse this in their project without any problems. And vice versa, CSS2 can easily pull all the needed elements from TFS2. At one point, we even had the idea of creating a game mode in Valve's multiverse, where cities and blue team from Team Fortress fight against the T's and red team from the other universe. Of course, for this to work properly, we even started to think of ways to balance it out, like adding extra health, armor or special items to player from the Counter-Strike universe. Just imagine some guy with a negative shooting Nubirchar state tied up with a medic. Get 5 free bucks for just trading your CSGO items on Skins Monkey. Simply select a few of your current skins, pick a new one in the same price range, and trade your old and rusty items to something more new and shiny. If you can't find something suitable for selected price, it will automatically add the leftover to your balance. Skins Monkey runs giveaways every day, week and month. Just complete a few simple tasks and receive free skins. Here you can easily preview desired weapons and if you need any particular item, you can always use the advanced filters in the middle. If you want any trade locked items, you can simply use the reserve feature until they become available. Use code Gaben and buy skins much cheaper with a 30 plus 5% top up bonus. Skins Monkey, links and my code down below. Over the next 6 months, we recreated all CSGO gameplay elements and mechanics from the ground up. 
But the difference between our project and the original game is that we make all of the stuff as modular as possible, so that at any time, if necessary, you can disable, modify or add a new system without affecting everything else. Let's take a quick look at some of them. The weapon spread system is probably one of the most complex things there is in Counter-Strike. In addition to the precise pattern, there are a huge number of small values that affect the final trajectory of the bullets and applied damage. By using the slow squadron spreadsheet, we recreated almost all of the necessary values, but for the moment we are using a slightly simplified version that does not take some of the parameters into account. Recreating everything one to one would be too time consuming and does not really necessary for the first gameplay prototype. In order to make things as convenient as possible, Moonly has made a separate plugin for editing already existing weapons or creating new ones. Instead of modifying default text configs, you can simply open a create.cs item game asset and select first or third person weapon models, tracers and muzzle flash particles, sounds, name, specs and much more. The next customizable element is the buy menu and since we plan to add new weapons from the beginning, it was necessary to heavily modify the logic of the interface. By using adaptive layout, we automatically calculate the required angle and add a slot for a new weapon. In total, each group can contain up to 10 slots with about 35 degrees for each weapon. As our project is not aimed at esports audience, we focus on casual, fun and interesting gameplay. This greatly loosens our hands and allows us to add all sorts of gameplay modes and new mechanics from time to time. Just imagine buying different kinds of knives or melee weapons from the start of a round. For example, a knife like Karambit, which like in real life causes a lot of small cuts and slowly kills the enemy from the blood loss. And in theory, it would be fun to create polls and make changes suggested by the community. The next important aspect that we have refined is the players as hitboxes. For those who suddenly don't know, there is a serious problem with them at the moment. Different agents have different hitboxes, and in some critical cases, the difference in head volume can be as much as 16%. So we've selected average values and added it to all character models using prefabs. This way, if we change the hitbox in one of the agents, it will automatically be updated in all of the others as well. In addition, we use prefabs for all animations, rig and bone settings and physical body parameters. The next step was to recreate the animation logic of the game characters. In CSGO, all events are triggered directly from the code, when Source 2 is using a node-based system called AnimGraph. So far, it has taken me 10 minor and 2 global iterations to prepare similar logic for the first gameplay test, but recreating it one to one will require a lot more time, so in today's gameplay you're likely to notice a lot of small flaws. For instance, sometimes characters instead of walking starts to slide or move their feet a bit oddly. Particularly interesting was the process of adding the grenades mechanics. There is a misconception amongst the community that the throwing trajectory of grenades is directly related to the physics engine. On the first source engine it's Havoc and on the second one it's Rubicon. A lot of people worry that switching engines will break all existing tactics, but I can assure you that is not the case here. Grenades in CSGO flying and bouncing off according to a strict math formula defined in the game code. And the only game on the first source engine on which grenades actually impacted by the physics is Half-Life 2. In CSGO, physics is only used for falling ragdolls after death, dropping weapons, jumping and falling. One of the biggest advantages of working with sandbox is that we can instantly integrate all recently added features into our own project. If they will add ray tracing support, we can make Counter-Strike with RTX. If they will release the game for virtual reality helmets or phones, we can quickly make VR or mobile versions as well. And so, after 6 months of development, on August 11, 2022, I'm uploading the first gameplay preview to this channel. The video starts getting a lot of views, feedback is incredibly positive, news sites are all over the place about it, and then, a week later, I got a message on Discord from a quite important person. No jokes, literal quote. Hey, I got some bad news. Wolf is shitting blood because of your video. And the first thought that ran through my head after reading this was, well, pack it up boys, we are fucked. Hey, ben. But in the end, it's not as bad as it initially sounded. If I understand everything correctly, some important guys from Valve saw my video, had a small meeting which included both the legal department and CSGO developers, as a result of which they put it together a small letter addressed to me. 
In a nutshell, I can still record and post videos about this project. And even though the developers have prohibited us from releasing it to the public for using the name or game assets of Counter Strike, the code is still unique and was written from scratch, so we may as well reuse it in our own projects. In theory, the problem with Valve could be avoided if Zul would allow us to use their assets, materials and maps from Classic Offensive, but I think he kinda dislikes me a bit and has no interest in all of that. And of course, I do not wanna test Valve's patience and ruin my relationship with them. However, it raises a quite valid question, why touching CSGO is the only factor that triggers them. There are no issues with Team Fortress Source 2, which is still being developed despite the fact that it gathered a lot more hype around itself and some developers from Valve even followed the official Twitter page of this project. So it's not just that they don't like when someone uses their assets or names without permission. I'm convinced that this is directly related to the official port of the game to the new engine and the CSGO developers just don't want their work to be confused with a random project made by two dudes sitting at home in underwear. And hear me out, in no way Valve should be insulted or blamed for anything. I completely understand their position and will not try to go against their decision. Even though I'm not legally or ethically breaking any of the laws. As the project is being created purely for demonstrational purposes and without any intent of monetization. One of the most important goals of this video is to explain and demonstrate that almost nothing will change after the game will move to Source 2. Engine updates are not meant to make the game look or play better, they are meant to make it work better and make it easier to develop new content, especially for people from the community. The only significant difference is the sound, because Source 2 uses the advanced Steam Audio sound engine. When any sound is produced, it shoots out beams in all directions, so that the correct echo, reflections from different materials and reverberation are being calculated. And finally, if even guys like us manage to recreate all basic gameplay in 5 to 6 months, Valve developers could certainly manage to do it in more than 5 years. Leave a comment with a frog emoji if you watched this far and check out my previous video where I talk about hidden updates in the current CSGO engine. Until next time, увидимся!